Okay, I've missed a slide. So, uh, good evening everybody. Can't see anybody because of those lights, so I presume you're all out there. Um, look, law is such a big entity. It's so much to talk about. It's really hard to talk about in eight minutes. So I'm just going to give you an overview of Laura, and then please don't hesitate and come up and hassle me in the breaks. So the question I have for you, what could you do with data that was in current and real time, cost efficient and re uh, relevant, could better inform service delivery infrastructure planning? Laura WAN is an option for that. It's a low powered Y area network, could be the answer. Long-range wireless platform is driving exciting new applications that are helping to enable the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is the idea that virtually any consumer or industrial device can be connected to the Internet in some way to enable smarter applications that drive greater functionality and more efficiency. For example, smart sensors and internet gateways that leverage our LoRa technology platform allow cities to become more efficient and more environmentally friendly when it comes to managing their resources. By installing smart parking meters, toll booths, and traffic signals, cities can significantly reduce emissions while also increasing the flow of traffic, making for much less congested streets. Our LoRa long-range wireless platforms also enable novel safety applications, such as early warning systems that allow fire departments and other safety personnel to quickly respond to potential forest fires, floods, avalanches, and other natural disasters before they happen or get out of control. In addition, our platforms can be used for a variety of monitoring purposes, from tracking people and pets to locating expensive items like bicycles, cars, farm equipment, and other valuable devices. So, some of the key features of LoRa. Geolocation. It's a cheap option for G uh, GPS tracking, geofencing capabilities, for tracking those cars that go missing, or kids sometimes. Uh, low cost. So, the infrastructure investment is, is a reasonably low cost, but the average description per device is $1 per year. Low power, so through extended battery life, the frequency of and the frequency of using, uh, sorry, frequency of use of sending data and the type of sensor can affect it. But some batteries have lasted up to 20 years. Long range, so depending on the line of sight, we can have up to a few kilometres in an urban environment, or up to 15 to 30 kilometres in rural areas. Um, so for uh, applications in remote areas of uh, Northern Territory, this is a great solution. Security. So the network we're using at the moment is with uh, a group called Geotech. They have a three levels of security. So they have a unique network key for ensuring security at a network level. level. A unique application key to ensuring end-to-end -end security from application and also a device-specific key. So if we're sending data over the uh, internet and we want to make sure that we keep it secure, the best way to do it. And high capacity. So each gateway will support hundreds of devices and millions of messages. I just want to quickly talk about the architecture and how it works in a very simplistic way. Uh, flowing from left to right. So we have some sensors that are out in the environment measuring environmental, tracking bikes, as we saw in the video. They send encrypted data packages to the gateways. And the way I describe this, is just like sending a text message. LoRa doesn't send video or audio, it sends data. So it sends in a nice little text message type package through to the gateways. These gateways use normal IT systems for backhaul. The data packages travel either, can, travel, sorry, can either travel via 3G, Wi-Fi, uh, or satellite to a cloud-based network server. And then that network server sends it to the end user. Now the end user has spoken to some researchers in CDU, like in raw data. Um, others are developing customised applications, and that data can feed into those. Or you can feed it into a data visualisation platform. So where are we up to? So we're currently rolling out a gateway network um, across Darwin and Palmston. 
with an industry partner called GeoWAN. So covering and looking at also covering other regional centres, uh, which is currently being mapped out at this present time. Here's a little map of just showing some coverage. So the blue uh, circles and lines you can see, they're actually gateways that are on CDU buildings. The pink is a temporary gateway that we set up to as part of the mapping coverage and trialling. And we're currently looking for a permanent location to mount that so we have the actual CBD covered. Uh, the green is commercial gateways that are run by our industry partner. And this will be boosted by indoor gateways, which they're rolling out with one of their industry partners across, the, uh, across Darwin. <clears throat> and CDU currently has access to those commercial gateways going out. So currently working with Jeremy Trombolet from the real team for implementing three proof of concepts projects. So in this trial, we're going to look at using different sensors. We're looking at different backhaul configurations. And we're also looking at what front-end applications and configurations work and don't work. So my little project, my proof of concept project, is um, I used to have a, a lot of, to do a lot of work with small farmers uh, and actually looking at their produce and how they get it to market in the hospitality industry. Um, and actually talking to some of them, they sort of, and I spoke to them about using technology on their farm, it was either way too costly for them, way too complicated. So they are interested in a solution that is cost effective, gives them the information that they can help them improve their farm management and also reduce some of their labour costs. So some of the tags we're using in this are cattle management tags to track cattle movements and behaviours, water sensors to look at the pH readings and the levels of dams and tanks, uh, soil mo moisture and composition, weather stations, asset trackers, and also a personal tracker with a health function and a full monitor alert on it. So if a particular farmer is working by himself out in the back paddock and has a fall, then it'll be alert. So what's the benefits? We have long-term monitoring due to the extended battery life. Remote sensor location is a whole um, area that we can look at why, uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for collecting data in remote areas against cellular data. And it's improved data. So just to finish, what are the big challenges? Okay, so Laura collects a lot of data. So you need to make sure you're collecting the right data uh, for the answer the right question. You need a good data analysis and a good place to store your data. And the question I'll leave you with is how will this new technology benefit you?